It's Wednesday, 7 o'clock. This is Tales from the Lounge and Cigar Company Spotlight. Yep. I'm Ron. I'm Chris. And we're going to sit here and talk some smack, tell some lies, talk about cigar companies. And considering we're in a garage and it's Texas, we're probably getting a little warm and a little sweaty. <laughs> but we're also going to smoke some cigars. There you go. Why All don't right. we have a cigar right now? That's uh, because we haven't got that far yet. And you know what? We need to get there. I'm going to, uh, I need to lower this some more because, you know, we got these cool props on the table, but we can't see them. Oh. I don't know if you're going to be able to get them and us. We'll just pick them up later. I'm going to push it back. Oh, see okay. some of the, we'll see some of the garbage. I don't care. All right. Oh. Today, we are talking crocs. Why? Because that's what we decided to do last week. Find your crux. Find your crux. What it used, What did it used to be? It used to be go crux yourself. Go crux yourself. I can. I've see been it told kind of, that. I've been told yeah. that a few times. <laughs> or something similar to something that. Something very similar <laughs> to that. All right. Uh, again, this is a cigar company spotlight. Tonight we're doing crux, uh, and this is tales from the lounge, uh, and we're gonna smoke something a little special. Uh, I have some older design cruxes, the red line. Let me take, I'm actually tearing the cellophane off of this. Just for you guys. Just for you guys. Which is probably just me and you right now. It is me and you right now. John hasn't even showed up yet. Our producer. Our producer fails. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I think it's sealed right there. Oh, there it is. I was looking for the seal. You need a trusty pocket knife? I need, Maybe. I need sharper fingernails. That would make me gay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next week we're going to like have these lit by the time we start. No, no, I think lighting them is part of the experience. All right. Oh, so we can show people how to light. But this isn't about lighting cigars. This is about well, cigar no, companies. It's still fun. All right. You get it? You like get it oh, yeah, yeah, we're good. Right, we're good. Excellent. Now... Check this out. Ah, my God, these are in there good. Special release. Special release red lines. Reminds me of an anime I love, but well, that's another story altogether. So we'll talk about these and why they're special release in a little bit. But this is what we're going to start with. Excellent. Yep. Now, I'm going to be up front with everybody. My week has been hell, and I have done almost no research. Uh, luckily, I have a partner over here <laughs> who uh, uh, can pick up my slack, and I hope in the future that I will pick up his uh, uh, and return the favor. That's why it's a partner. Right? And that's why, I, and, and you know, and, and we discussed this last week, that's why I was glad I was able to snag you for this uh, little uh, uh, series. We always have a lot of fun together. Ever since we met at the lounge, I mean, we yep. uh, I mean... We've been on two trips. We've been on two trips. Hog hunting trip and a trip to Cuba. Where I shot the biggest hog. I have yep. to rub that in. <laughs> it's required. Oh. All right. We're here to talk about Crux. Not let's talk crux. about Crux. So right. Let's start off with... Where are they out of? They are out of Boca Raton, Florida. Florida? Yeah. It would do anything in Florida. That right, place right, is right. crazy. Mm -hmm. It's ate up with Corona too. Well, yeah. But everybody's ate up with Corona. Um, but it was started by uh, Jeff Hogan and uh, Joel Rogers, who were who owned Tobacco Grove out of Maple Grove, Maple Minnesota. Grove, Minnesota. Yep. Yep. Right. Um, started they their first release was in 2014. So they're a very fairly young company. Yeah, I mean, only I mean we're right at they're right six at years. their six year yeah. anniversary. Um, now we're gonna preface this as we are probably for the first several weeks of this series. We know Jeff. We've met Jeff and Joel both. They've been to our shop. 
we've been no to major KC. events. With, we know KC. Jess, Jess brother. Yeah. And uh, so we we have a tie with him, just like we did with uh, Patoro. Patoro. And when well, the next couple of companies that we do, we're going to have an in with them. And we're going to be able to find out information that not everybody's going to know offhand. <laughs> uh, and we're really going to promote their stuff because they make good sticks. I mean, yeah. uh, they're solid companies. They've got a solid product. And not only do we want to feature the companies, but we also want to promote the, the, the companies that have solid product. Yeah. You know, that not trying to gouge you and, and, and that they're, they're decent people. Uh, you know, and that's one of the things that industrial strives for when they're looking for partnerships uh, mm -hmm. from the vendors is they want people who are good people, they treat their employees well, yep. and uh, make a quality product. So, you know, like I said, I'm going to preface this. Yeah, if you don't hit all of their points, you're not coming in. You might have a great stick, but if you treat your, your employees and your people like trash, you're not coming in. I don't care how good your stick is. Or if you make ridiculous... Uh, requirements for and, yeah. uh, bringing the product in. Yeah, you must carry a hundred facings of each of our product. Or whatever yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. So yeah, we'll tell that story later. Yeah. Anyway, so that was a that. Oh my God, I forgot how good these yeah, things were. Yeah, this is oh. this is a good one. I'm glad I got two boxes of these. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one's in the aging humidor, and maybe this time next year we'll open the other one. Right. Uh, and again, we're drinking scotch. Uh, Ty, you can relax. We're not drinking uh, Shoulder Monkey at this time. We're drinking Tomatin. Tomatin's good. Uh, Tomatin 12 year. Fairly inexpensive bottle of scotch, which is a good go-to for just everyday drinking and something you don't want to, uh, don't need a special occasion for. Uh, so where else do you want to start? Okay, we so we've got Casey, Jeff, and Joel. Joel. Yeah. A six-year-old company. Six-year-old company. Um, Where are they getting their tobacco from? They are getting their tobacco from Nicaragua. Right? Now, are they predominantly getting everything from Nicaragua? Or are they? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, you know, an interesting thing that I noticed as we get into this, and it'll probably lead us down one path and then we'll go another way, is comparing my research from Patoro to my research for Crux. They have a great website, and I'm not saying that just because I know the people who designed their website. Again, oh, okay. we do have an in with them. They have a great website. <laughs> we haven't gotten nice that part yet. Yeah. Nice and clean and easy to um, navigate. But I was surprised in like, oh. How superficial the information was. Yeah, it, so like at Patoro, it would list all the different Vitolas or sizes for each cigar line within their their brand and would have the size. You know, like Corona, it's a five by whatever or Gordo or, you know, um, Lancero or whatever. Right. Easy to find on the Patoro. Yeah. On the Crux side, it would say, oh, we carried this, this cigar in a uh, a Toro and a uh, Robusto and a Lancero, but it wouldn't have any sizes listed. And it didn't really talk about the tobacco for the binder wrapper filler. Right. Uh, very much. Now, if I went to some of their press releases when they were releasing a cigar, I could find some of that information. Or if I went to a review that someone else did on a cigar after press release, I could find that information. But it wasn't really up front on their website. So I finished all of the research I could do and then was like, okay, I got to go to one of our inside guys and ask the question. Because I was just curious. Like, yeah. is there a reason you do this? Or is it just the website hasn't been finished being built Don't stop out? Talking. Because for those of you that don't know, don't know, just last year, Crux went through a major rebranding campaign. Um, and so this is the old Crux logo that you can see there. And then on this box, you can see the new Crux logo. You can see it's obviously a lot easier to read. But so they went so, through some rebranding. Re and it just so happens that one of the owners of the cigar lounge that we go to, Industrial Cigar Company, um, also owns a small uh, business and helped take Crux through their rebranding campaign. Exactly. Now... 
So that's who I went to to let's, ask some of these questions. So let's tell. So so let's take a half a step back. Let's tell that story. Because uh, who was it? Jeff or Casey told the story about their decision to rebrand. Yeah. They were at a major trade show, and they said they had this gentleman stand outside their booth in front of their big logo in front of their booth for about 10 minutes. And then he walked up and said, Just so what does that see. say? What does that say? You can see, I mean, it's a, it's kind of a cool thing, but it, it's it is. It's a very cool logo, but it, it's, it's very hard to, read. hard to read. And he told him it was Crux, and he goes, well, I was just curious, I couldn't read it. Yeah. And so at that point, he started thinking about, uh, Jeff and his team started thinking about what do we need to do with the logo to make it more recognizable, to make it stand out more, and to make it more relatable. Yeah. And, you know, one of the interesting things, because we know uh, the uh, who we were hoping to have as a guest host today, Brandon, you still suck. <laughs> uh, uh, Brandon and his company, I was hoping to have them here. But one of the interesting things was Chris and I was actually, uh, we weren't part, but we got to preview some of the ideas that were thrown around beforehand before they finally decided on the uh, uh, final design. And to be honest, everything that we saw was not this. Uh, nothing we saw was this. They all had kind of some kind of symbolism and that type of thing. But this one uh, uh, was the final pick and we were part of very simple. pre-market testing. Yeah, pre-market testing. You know, uh, I, luckily enough, knock on wood, uh, uh, the, the people at Industrial Cigar Company who are very supportive of Tales from the Lounge and uh, very supportive of the cigar industry and cigar culture in general. Uh, uh, they let us in on little things. Uh, in fact, you and I were part of the part of the tasting for the uh, industrial house stick. Yep. So I mean, you know, we've been uh, Chris and I have been thoroughly blessed uh, as far as cigars go and the industry, and uh, and we want to pass that along to everybody and. Uh, and share with them uh, the things that we get to see, and uh, pass on some hopefully some knowledge that, that, that they didn't have. Huh? So now that I've done the uh, uh, what is that a PSA for the uh, for the step show. back there. <laughs> step back. For so that. they did a major redesign. They did this logo for years, and then last year they redesigned and redid. And I'm going to let Chris because he did such a great job on the uh, research. Talk about this logo and this uh, uh, brand. So uh, what I'll do to talk a little bit about the logo, actually each of their different lines, and we'll get into the lines, but I do want to just talk about the Crux logo itself and some of the symbolism in it. And if, if you've done any type of research or even halfway thought about it, uh, about a cigar, a cigar's name or the design or the color, and we ran into that with Patoro. Yeah, there's that we, did, that we didn't realize. There's usually, or, or almost always is, a reason behind or some sort of symbolism that is meant for the design they picked, the color they picked, the logo they picked, or whatever. So, um, talking with Brandon, I asked him when you went to this, when you went from the old Crux. Uh, script and to this new script of crux um tell me a little bit about about the crux and so if you look at it uh the r is not complete and none of the letters touch so it's kind of a little bit of incomplete script and then you can see up here at the top there's a gold where is it there we go a little gold piece to the end of the x so he he told me that same thing on the shirt yeah so Growing up, it was Jeff Hogan's dad that used to always say that your day wasn't complete without a cigar, and your cigar was the punctuation to the end of your day. So this Crux logo, the reason that the letters don't touch and the R isn't complete and the letters are kind of a little bit incomplete is because your day is not complete until you've had a Crux, and then the gold piece up here on the X you know, kind of the lighting of that cigar, that's the punctuation or the end of your day, the completion of your day. And I love it. And I it ends it. with Crux. 
So that's that's a little bit on you know why they chose that script and what that stands for. You might just think, oh yeah, they were just trying to catch your eye, but no, not really. There's actual symbolism and meaning uh, behind it. So I, I found that really interesting. Hey, our producer finally showed up. Our producer, did he ask us a question? <laughs> no, he just said, my favorite. How you doing, brother? Good to see you. <laughs> oh, yeah. So our producer, who actually lives in uh, South Carolina. He's not really our producer, but he would. We call him that. We, we'll, we'll call him that. He visited us last week. Um, he does not get these at his cigar lounge in uh, Columbia, South Carolina. I'll give you I'll give you a, one of these red lines to send to me. And so what I do is about once every month and a half, I'll buy one from each of the different lines and send it to him in a care package. And they are quickly his favorite cigar. However, I spoiled him with a couple of other cigars while he was there this past weekend. And, well, so uh, did I. I tried. Yeah, at least. yeah, <laughs> yeah. So he took a bunch of those home, and uh, I'm afraid that uh, he might be asking me for some of those uh, more expensive cigars uh, here and there. Until I but, start sending a little cash on Yeah, I know. All right. Um, All right, I, but just remember, just remember, uh, if you want anything uh, as far as a uh, uh, cigars that we're talking about, get online, find a local shop that carries them. Now, and, and I, this is a shameless plug, I'm gonna do it anyway. Industrial Cigar carries all that stuff and they will ship yep. in industrialcigar.co and you can order online. And if you live within 20 miles of the Frisco area, they will deliver. And they said they were gonna continue that yeah. Uh, even after the COVID. Yeah. Uh, uh, so you can check that out there, uh, or they'll send it to you and they will ship wherever you want it sent. So uh, uh, don't hesitate to, uh, to check them out. All right. So we've got through a little bit of their main logo. They were started in 2014. They went through rebranding last year. Talk about that. Uh, their new... I guess their motto is hashtag find your crux, all one word. Yep. So if you're enjoying a good crux cigar, whether it's the old old label or the new one, take a picture of yourself enjoying it and post it out on their webpage or on Instagram or whatever and uh, mark it with the hashtag find your crux because every now and then they do giveaways okay. and drawings that might fit, feature your picture in one of their ads if That'd it's a cool, cool enough picture. That would be cool. So just, just an FYI. Um, we, and we qualify, right? Yeah, there you We're go. We're not employees. <laughs> um, so, one of our one of their main mottos ever since they started for Crux is what they want to convey with their cigars is celebrating life's successes, failures, and moments of reflection. And there, my God, I could smoke these forever and still not finish the list, <laughs> right? <laughs> Especially the failure part. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but we always learn from our failures. I like Absolutely. To, I like to put Absolutely. a positive spin on that. Um, so now, do you know who they partnered with? What factory they partnered with uh, when they first got started? I'm going to make a guess, but uh, is it uh, Licencia? Yes, that is correct. I get lucky every once in a while. Yes. <laughs> so they did partner with a Placencia factory there in uh, Nicaragua. And they have some awesome tobacco. Uh, a lot of the big names, uh, boutique, uh, uh, who are getting their stuff from Nicaragua, Nicaragua are getting it from Placencia. Uh, I uh, showed that to my wife and and uh, and said it Placencia and she goes did you say placenta <laughs> no 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 yeah. so <laughs> all right so uh, what got that joke out of the way there you go what was the first so they rolled it when they first initially in 2014 they rolled out four cigars actually well four cigars but kind of could be five could be considered five but do you know what the first four that they rolled out were no uh okay i'm gonna and and, and uh, I know some of them, but I don't know them all. All right, so the Nympha, or the Nymphomaniac. Nymphomaniac? Well, that's the official long term for it, the Nympha or the Nympha Dark. That's why I say okay. it's kind of four or five, depending on how you look at it. Um, the Skeeters. Yeah. Which has, so the, the Nympha has a, and I don't have one with me, but it has a, I want to call it like a little Tinkerbell type looking Nympho that's kind of in green. Well, and um, uh, with wings and stuff that's when you on said, the label. Uh, well, 
I thought it was ne- for Nephilim, which is a uh, mythical creature. Mm. Uh, uh, and the logo for the nymphas yep. are can't get enough. So it kind yeah. of falls in line. Um, those are only uh, produced in a double perfecto. Uh, and one is slightly uh, darker than the other. One's kind of a comes in a brown uh, packaging and one kind of comes in a caramel packaging. Um, but uh, the flavor differential on those two is the wrapper. Is the wrapper, right? Because one is, let me look here. Nope. Uh, yes, is the wrapper because one is shade grown and one is sun grown. Okay. Right? So the sun grown is the darker or the nympha dark. Yep. Um, but it's all, uh, the wrapper is a Halapa uh, Halap, uh, Halap Valley. Valley. Yep. Uh, the binder is Indonesian tobacco and then the filler is uh, Viso uh, there from Nicaragua. Okay. The, um, and the nympha was actually to pay homage to uh, the classic Cuban uh, nympha Vitola. Okay. That's that was their thought process through when they were when they were uh, designing that. So that's that's the one. Then the Skeeter, uh, which is a really small uh, Purito, a four by thirty-two, I think. Is just a little prick, and I think what Brandon told me was, you can go outside and smoke it and be back inside before the mosquito bites you. Ah, so that's they where, been, that they, was they, the they passion. Didn't, they didn't design that in Texas. Right. Well, yeah. I was like, man, those mosquitoes here are pretty aggressive. Yes, they are. Uh, that's uh, the the wrapper and the filler on that is Nicaraguan. The binder is uh, Indonesian uh, on that. But that one, it's a it's a medium to full. Um, and it has a picture of a little skeeter on it. Now, Brandon did say, because this is another question I asked, the Nymphas and the Skeeters, they have not done the rebranding or the redesign on the labels yet. Okay. But those are coming out end of this year, first quarter next year. And he did let me see a preview of those, and they look really you cool. Squirrely yeah. Yeah. Are you squirrely Yeah. Um, okay, so those are the, the two or three. The, the fourth one uh, is the Passport. They came out with the passport, um, and it's ta- it's a blue label, uh, similar to the Bull and Bear, which we'll get to, but it just said passport across it, and its tagline was one hour vacation, no visa required, right? So I like you it. sit I back, like enjoy it, it uh, and enjoy that that vacation. So it is an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper. Nicaraguan binder and filler. Now, you came across something very interesting about the uh, the uh, the tobacco and their listings. Yes. Let's so, touch on that. So, when I on their website, I found that it didn't really list what the wrapper, binder, filler, what the tobacco was made of. So just Nicaragua. Yeah, just Nicaraguan. Just listed it pure, just Nicaragua. Didn't give any, get into any specifics. Um, now, I could go to a press release or cigar reviews and some people would have it, but even then, it would just be, it might list a valley in Nicaragua, but yep. it wouldn't get too specific. And so right. I asked Brandon, since he did, he, him and his company did the webpage and did the branding redesign. I said, hey, is there a reason? Well, let, now, let's clarify. Brandon... Went to Nicaragua. Yeah, 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 yeah. He went to the farm. Yeah. They did some video. They did a lot of... Uh, Smoked a lot of cigars. A lot of sm- cigars. Yeah. But they also did a lot of uh, 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 touring of the facilities. And so Brandon had a lot of first-hand knowledge of what the operation was because that was crucial on creating the right brand and rebrand for the, the cigars themselves because yeah. seeing that kind of process what it was coming from and that type of thing. Well, in creating a brand that's a reflection of company values and the people and, the and their product. passion and the product, it's not an easy thing to do. No, it's not. That that's that's a that, that's a skill um, and takes a lot of expertise and Brandon and his team did an excellent job. Another shameless plug. Brandon and his company 
Go Local in Frisco. Yeah. Are phenomenal at branding and marketing. Uh, if you are thinking about any kind of branding yes. or marketing for your company, check them out. Uh, the, the like I said, go local. Uh, phenomenal photography and phenomenal, video. And 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 I will list. Uh, I will post in when I post this to uh, YouTube. I will post a link to the uh, promotional video that they shot while they was there. And you get shots of tobacco farms and tobacco production that I have never ever seen anywhere else before. Yeah, so you should visit Crux's webpage because they do have some little uh, two or three minute videos that are really good, especially talking about it shows you kind of the process that the tobacco goes through. It's a quick little three minute video. It's a great video. So. Absolutely, absolutely. So. so so I asked Brandon, why why do you not list number one the sizes the sizes you know you list that it's a Lancero or a Toro or a Corona but you don't list the actual size and secondly why is it why don't I able to see you know oh the binders this the fillers this and you know the wrappers this so little insider information so one thing is is my Corona might be a different size than your Corona, right? So my Corona might be a, a five by 44 and someone else's, another brand might be a five and a half by 42 or, so the Corona, the size does kind of have a little bit of play in well, it. Well, and then Plus, to kind of jump in here, I've no, I noticed uh, you go to websites and you, and, you, and you want to learn more about cigars and they'll show you the sizes and shapes of various cigars and what their names are for identification. Mm -hmm. And part of the deal is uh, Crux didn't want to pigeonhole themselves into those criteria. If it's a half inch longer or a right. two centimeter more di or less diameter yeah. and they wanted to call it a Maduro and uh, it just didn't fit the Maduro uh, right. uh, so that, sizing. That, that's, and so that made sense. That, that's part of it. You know, they wouldn't get pigeonholed or anything. Now, the reason they like to just list Nicaraguan tobacco, and I might butcher this a little bit, but from the conversation with Brandon, there has to be something with an FDA law that if you have certain things listed, like a lot of these companies like to get cute and say, oh, such and such valley on this on the wrapper and such and such this and such and such that. You start to, you start to build a wall around what you can do with that cigar and after a certain time period i think it was in 2008 you had to have predominantly that same blend for that same cigar otherwise if you were to change that blend now it gets classified as a different cigar and there's all other kinds of red tape you got to get through but by keeping it just generic oh it's nicaraguan tobacco then it doesn't matter what valley the wrapper comes from or the binder or the filler exactly as long as it's all from Nicaragua so it gives the the cigar maker and manufacturer a lot more flexibility um, in their cigar making and uh, their blends without having to jump through a bunch of what I'll call nonsense uh, FDA legal. yeah legal hoops legal hoops so so I was like oh I you know what that makes sense plus he pointed out you know what the guys that really care about either the size, like they have to always smoke a, 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 Gordo a 52 inch ring gauge and that's yeah. the only thing they'll smoke or whatever, they'll go and do the research, the extra research, the extra leg work, or they'll ask the question. Right. Right. So Which, they ask the question and that creates a personal connection right. to the product because now they're interacting with the company and they're getting that... Uh, that interaction uh, and that uh, connection to the company because I talked with somebody at Crux and blah 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 uh, and so it's a brilliant marketing strategy yeah I love it I love it all right and then the last one that they introduced in 2014 was the bull and bear which is probably out of their line probably my favorite cigar and that has done phenomenal uh, everywhere I've seen uh, that's that's gotten it and I was surprised that it was one of the first ones released because when I first started smoking crux I didn't and maybe it's because the shop didn't start carrying the bull and bear and they carried the guild and yeah, they didn't start carrying the, the bull and bear until the rebranding right 
Yeah, somewhere around there, maybe right before. Or right it. before. And so that's what I, I was surprised. The bull and, I don't. I don't see remember yeah. seeing the bull and bear with the old logo, logo on it. Uh uh-uh. uh Nope. So that was uh, 2014. So now, that was the first now, cigars that they they rolled out. Now, since then, they rolled out a couple more that I've seen. Well, and let's go back to the bull and bear. All right. Uh, let's go to the so new the logo. Part. Yeah. Oh, the new logo. Okay, so this is the because, bull and bear. And at the very corner, down here, if you're able to look real close, you can see that it's an outline of a bull and a bear, and kind of in a yin and yang uh, format in that circle. Now, remember I said that there was significance to logos and colors and designs that are on there. So the significance for the bull and bear is the bull and bear was specifically made for Wall, Wall Street, right? So the bull and bear, right? Um, you know, you've got you've got a a, a recession or a growing market, right? Yep. Um, and the yin and yang kind of way that they've made that logo helps to symbolize the balance. The balance. The exactly. bull, the bear, balance. And the nice thing about the bull and bear is. It's a fuller cigar, yet not overpowering. It's got smokiness to it, yet some sweetness. So again, it's that balance. It's and a good balance. In fact, that's one of the neat things about the rebranding. Those are all of that stuff is on the inside. Smoky and sweet. They talk a little bit about on the uh, about it on the inside. Now I'm not sure how well you can see this, but if you look on this side over here where the blue is. That is a herringbone pattern. I'll try to get that as close as I can. The inside is a herringbone uh, pattern on the inside for that. And I'm gonna let Chris explain why that is. Well, because that's symbolic or typical of what Wall Street traders, the suits, the type of suits they would wear on Wall Street. Herringbone suits. Right, so again, if you were just looking at the inside of it and looking at the logo, oh, that looks kind of cool, but didn't really think about it. Again, there is a lot of symbolism and meaning and thought that cigar brands and designers and people like Brandon that go into building a brand and purveying a message, even if it's a subliminal type message exactly. that gets out there, right? That we might not always recognize. So. I found that really interesting, and I really uh, enjoyed that, uh, learning some of that. Because I had to ask Brandon, because again, some of the symbolism from Pretoro was on their website. Right. I knew all the logos from Crux, but none of the symbolism was on there. And again, Brandon's, I said, why is it not there? Why don't you talk about it? Why is it not on a page hidden away or something? He said, because if you really want to know, you'll ask, and then that promotes that customer interaction with the cigar brand. And that exactly. it's meant to bring that community closer together. And create that connection. I love it. I love it. So again, I had to defer to the expert, Brandon. I said, "Hey, you know what? So that's pretty smart. You got, you, you got some singles down there, right? Yeah. So I got some singles. This is the Crux Guild brand, and you can see in the corner there. It is a circle with three swords uh, crossed in it, and the Guild brand uh, that uh, when it was first brought out in 2015." That well, I was going to show them. Uh, Let me show them. Oh, the bull Let's go back bear. to the bull and bear. Sure. Here's a single for that one. That is a beautiful stick. And again, that one is uh, characterized by that smoky and sweet flavor. It's got a full, it's got a little bit of uh, black pepper, but it's not overpowering. It's got some earthiness and some cocoa in it, uh, in the flavors. It's a medium to full. Um, but it's a it's a great stick. Like I said, it's my favorite stick. That's the first one I usually pull when I go to smoke a Crux cigar. Okay. So now we're talking about the Guild. Now three we're swords. To three swords. Uh, that stands for or is symbolic of craftsmanship and the history of cigars uh, as a handmade product and allowing each person to be united by the leaf. And so when I say united, I thought it was about slicing people in half. <laughs> When I say united by the leaf, I'm gonna put this up here, and you look again at the design, you see like miniature, and I don't know if you can see it that close, but it's like miniature little plant leaves that are on there if you look at it real close. So united by the leaf, and they're all really close together. 
So again, promoting that unity and community uh, of Crux Cigars. Now, a little uh, information on that logo. While it's an excellent design, there is another company that has protested to say it looks too much like theirs, even there, though theirs aren't swords, and, and this is obviously swords. Um, and so Brandon said they're gonna work on tweaking the design a little bit, even though they know they would win if they went to court. Why spend uh, the money? Why spend the time and effort? Let's just... It'd be cheaper to just redesign it. Just redesign it and make it even better. So right. more right. in that other company's face, and I'm not mentioning any names. So anyway, so that's the guild. Well, and, I think they're kind of dicks anyway. Uh, well, the other company, right? <laughs> right. So there's the guild. There is the single cigar for the guild. You right. know what I always love about the, the, the Crux line is the, the Nicaraguan tobacco has such a sheen to it yes. uh, that you don't find on a lot of uh, cigars. All right, so now the next one, and the Guild comes in a lot of different sizes, and if you want to know, go check their, their website. I'm not going to read off all the different sizes, but they have a good good selection. Really? Do, I mean, and you... so the Guild, I will say, again, Ron mentioned this, what I love about about Crux is it gives you this flavor profile and this is great whether you're an experienced smoker or a newbie it at least lets you know hey here are the three predominant flavors you're gonna get out of this plus this is a medium to full cigar so if you're more of a light cigar you go ah, maybe that's too much for me or maybe I want to try it to see where I am because I used to think I was more on the light to medium and after I went through a blind challenge with Dave, the owner of uh, Industrial, I found out I was more on the medium to full side. I'm not surprised. You've been smoking long enough, your palate should be so, enough to almost you know, everything. But I, I think this is a great tool for whether you're experienced or a novice in cigars, and it also helps you you know, understand the flavors you should be getting out of this and what flavors you really like when you smoke a cigar. So, all right, that's the guilt. Now I'm gonna go back to one, or not back to one, I'm gonna talk about one that we don't have an example of. I've um, never seen it. The and du, the du Connoisseur. Du Connoisseur. Yes, and- Now, that and the Nymph both seem to be Lanceros, am I incorrect? No, you're correct. So, right. the Du Connoisseur actually comes in three sizes, but two of them are predominantly Lanceros. Okay. The number one, the number two are Lanceros. The number three, um, is a Lancero, but it's kind of, it would be considered a, a mini Lancero. It's kind of shorter. Okay. It's a lot shorter than the other two. Um, its band is a white and gold band, and I got to see the actual new prototype that they're getting ready to approve for that one. Um, and it is, uh, it is an archer. Yeah. Uh, you know, kind of pose in an archer pose. And the Du Connoisseur is for, um, I want to get this right, when I was talking to Brandon, I didn't write notes down, I relied on memory, I talked to him yesterday, so um, it's more for, uh, or symbolic of, you know, someone who wants that refined quality, uh, because the Du Connoisseur, a uh, little bit more classy, you know, think of archery, it's a little bit more classy. It's kind of like the archery. Sport. Yeah. It's kind of like the archer that used to be on hood ornaments on high-end cars. Yeah, it's it's a little bit finer skill that you have to use. Those people have to be a little bit more focused, you know. So yep. it's a uh, uh, that what I found interesting. It's not like a it's not like a uh, grenade launcher. No, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Um, what I found interesting in that one were the flavor profiles, and I haven't smoked this one, but I'm. He said they are going to start carrying it. Um, and they are getting ready to roll out the new uh, label for it. And now that it's, yeah, so it's old label used to be a star. Right. And it's going to be now an archer on there. Um, well, I'm glad they're changing it from the star because, you know, so many different lines use the star for their products. Uh, 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 and, you know, and, and Pretorio uses theirs. Now, theirs is a, a different style of star, but yeah. a star is overused, to be honest. Well, and in Texas, it really is overused. Exactly. Right, the Lone Star State. So exactly. What I what I found interesting when I read through the flavor profile of this is it has a hint of red pepper. Red pepper. Oh, I red, like pepper. red pepper. 
but it's also not classified as a bold uh, cigar. It's more in the medium profile. Okay. So that, you know, it has hints of red pepper, but then it it fades into some cedar and uh, caramel coffee and earthy tones. Oh, and man, so I'm loving the sound of this already. I'm, I'm thinking that red pepper probably is at the beginning to uh, ignite your palate, yeah. wake up your palate, and then it kind of just draws you in with those next rolling set of flavors. So I'm really curious, excited for them. I, you know, I know everything is this. Nicaraguan, yep. but I'm curious exactly where that wrapper, because I bet that creaminess and uh, uh, comes from the the, the wrapper. Alapa Valley. Alapa Valley. Yeah. I'm not surprised. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the filler on it is a Honduran filler, but the binder and the wrapper are uh, Nicaragua. So, so that's the Dew Connoisseur. Don't have an example to show you. Um, the other one is uh, also came out in 2015, so the second year they were there, and it's called the Sport. And it has actually been... Is it the sport or the passport? No, it's the it's the sport. We already talked about the passport. The sport's okay. not even listed. It's been deep sixed. Okay. It's one that they had. So if there are any out there, you know, you great. got a unicorn. Yeah, you have a unicorn. It was a, a petite. Uh, would it be a unicorn or would it be a, like a a a, a, a dodo bird? Something that's yeah. quite extinct. Yeah, something. It would be something. Yeah, probably something like that. Uh, we're gonna come up with our own terminology right. here, man. <laughs> uh, but it was a it was a petite patella, so it was uh, like a four and a half by thirty five. Oh, was that's short, short. Really tiny. It was uh, for a short, quick smoke when you didn't have an hour to smoke, um, and it had its label. I did see it on one of the someone when it was first press released. Uh, had like three sports figures, kind of silhouettes on yep. the label and everything. But it's one that. Uh, was very similar to the Skeeters. Yeah. Uh, and so it they was one that they just redundant. decided it was a little redundant and time to just retire that one and move on. So there you go. There's the sport. And at the end of the show, I've got a question. And it, I, I saw this question online and I thought I would pass it on to you, but uh, right. I already forget that. All right. So next is also in 2015 was the Limitada. So the Limitada oh. is the one that came out next. Yeah. And that's what we're smoking right now is a Limitada. But when they introduced the Limitada, so 2015, the Limitada, what they introduced was what they call the PB5 and the Red Line. Right. Um, and uh, all the same, so the Limitada is, again, um, Excellence. It's a limited edition, and if I, I don't have one of the boxes, but the design on the inside here, if you were to look at it real close, look like little tiny. Um, what did I tell you earlier? Now, now that I'm on camera, it's escaping me. I don't remember. Um, oh, stealth. Stealth. Well, it looked like a oh, stealth, stealth fighters. Stealth, stealth fighters on there because obviously those are a limited, uh, in limited quantity. Um, in high quality uh, plane. And so that was kind of cool that that's the design that they choose for, chose for the inside of the lid. Um, those are again, uh, medium to full, only a thousand of each are produced a year. So only a thousand PB5s are produced a year, only a thousand red lines are produced a year. And then in 2016, they introduced what I'll call the short version of the PB5, which is called the show. Right. In 2016. And then in 2018, they produced the Gunner. Yep. In the limited in the Limitada edition, which is basically a Corona Gorda. And then in 2019, last year, they did the Short Salomon. Right. Oh, uh, Short Salomon. But those are all the Limitada. So that's different sizes, and they instead of just okay. calling them by their sizes, I'm, they called them by the Gunner, the Red Line, the Show, the PV5, and. I guess they call it just the short Salomon. They didn't come up with an extra name for that one. Now, I'm gonna I'm gonna backtrack just a little bit. All right. Here is the here is the old Guild box. The old label. The old label. And I'm not opening cellophane on this one. But one of the cool things about this one, I'm gonna have to stand up. Hold that. Is you'll notice. The Crux logo here is actually a plate that's nailed to the box, and it has a red little gem. 
and it is a Swartsky Swartsky crystal and Swartsky quartzy. And so uh, we have decided that we're just going to call this the Schwartz the crystal. Crystal. But those are actual little crystals that they put on each of those boxes when they first came out, their first runs on those. Now we don't have a Limitada Short Salamone box for the new, but this is the old one. Now, and I was gonna ask you this, and I, I don't know if we have an answer, and uh, we may have to find out for the next time we do this one, but you'll notice that box is actually oddly shaped. It's not square. Uh, it's smaller at the top and longer at the bottom. But these are our short salamones. I, and and my answer is is you're right. I don't have an answer. I don't I don't think that the short salamone um, hat is is um, tapered or anything. It's my not. only thought is is if it was tapered, they could be in there alternating ways. But even right. then, wouldn't account for why they designed the box. So yeah. except for it's just. It's a new, it's a new limitata well, and the, and the, size, so maybe they were trying to grab to the, some and attention. When, and when we get to the Epicure, I got the Epicure. It's got the same shape box. Okay. So. All right. So that's the limitata. Um, only a thousand of each are produced a year. Um, I think we got three or four hundred in the PB five, and probably sold out half of them on Saturday. Oh, I know. They and, went and, quick. And every time, every time Crux stuff comes out, and we get, especially the limitata. And that's part of the reason why I grabbed two boxes of the red lines when I had the chance uh, was because they were so limited and everybody else was picking up the regular stuff and the short Salamones. I was only able to get one box of the short Salamones yeah. as opposed to two of the red lines. Now, interesting on, on the tobacco on these is that the wrapper is a specific wrapper. Uh, it's a special wrapper, Iganasso. Like a Nasso wrapper uh, from the Esteli there in Nicaragua. Uh, and the filler is five different undisclosed Nicaraguan tobaccos. So um, that was just kind of interesting because that's that to have five different type of tobaccos in the filler was. Uh, that is. Uh, and you know, I'd have to defer to Edgar on that question of is that an unusual amount of different leaves yeah. to use for a blend but you know that goes back to our conversation last week about blending and how that is almost like a wine or liquor <laughs> yeah. process you take tobaccos from different regions that have different flavors and different uh, profiles and you mix them together to get the flavor profile that you're looking for or the complexity and the change in a cigar that you're looking for. Well, the Limitada is a complex and clean type cigar. That's kind of the, the two key words they use to describe it. Yeah. Uh, a lot of creaminess and nuttiness and earthiness uh, in those flavors that you'll get. All right, so that's the Limitada. Now on to the Epicure. So Which is Brandon's favorite. Brandon's favorite. Here's the Epicure. And the logo on the bottom, you can see, is, is a Pegasus. Now, that is the regular Epicure, and then... Here's the old Epicure. There's the old Epicure, and then there is a Maduro <coughs> Epicure. Excuse me, everybody. Which has the same logo, just different color, right? But there is symbolism behind those colors as well. So, the Epicure... Now, I, and you know, and we com and we commented earlier when we first started this whole thing about the complexity of the logo. You know, that's a big E, but my God, it's so ornate. Yeah. And and everything, I can understand why somebody would have a problem uh, uh, understanding what it is. But then again, it's got this short top, long bottom on the box, and I'm sure they're held to store because you, you just can't stack them like boxes. Yeah. All right, so. Um, now, one thing I will say, and I don't think we mentioned this before, all Crux cigars and tobacco is aged for a minimum of four years. We have not talked about that. Minimum of four years. I got that because I watched the video on the Nicaraguan artisans, that they call them, in their little video taking you through the process of how the cigar is made and kind of the, 
the tobacco process from seed to, to, to rolling. Right. And it's a quick little th three minute video. So it's a great little video. Um, but the Epicure, the Pegasus on here, um, is there to represent um, attainable uh, dreams. Dream, dream, uh, attainable dreams. I'm trying to think the exact words that um, Brandon used. Yeah, attainable dreams, attainable luxury, you know, something that's really nice but very attainable but still hard to get. Yep. So that's what the Pegasus is there. And then again on here. And who had a Pegasus in mythology? Um, what's his name? <laughs> <laughs> that's not a question I prepared for. I know who it was, but uh, Perseus? Perseus, yes, Perseus. Um, but again here, the uh, the design here is again to meant to to symbolize that uh, closeness and community. And then again, I just love that they put creamy, light pepper, and nuttiness, and this is a light to medium uh, flavor profile on here. Now, now that you have that one out, and we can't actually do this because we don't have the right box, but one of the unique things that they did with the rebranding and the boxing mm. design was when you buy a box of Crux, no matter what the size or, or, or our brand, everyone comes with two five packs. And if we had the right size box, two of those would fit right in this side. You got the divider. And then 10 more would fit on that side. And then 10 more singles on this side. And so you, you, you buy the box, you grab this, you take it with you on the road, and you leave the box behind. And that's got plenty of room to drop a little Bovita pack in there. Now, it's not going to keep it uh, completely uh, humidified forever, but it'll keep you for a, a day days. or two, a couple of days. And uh, uh, the other nice thing is if you don't want to uh, buy, you know, you want to buy five singles, you just grab the five pack straight out of the box and you run with it. And again, the design is awesome on it. They've uh, got the logos. They've got the picture of the cigar. And they've got the logo at the bottom, and you've got that iconic uh, coloring uh, between the box and the labels. And you know the the, the packaging is just immaculate on this. And uh, if I remember right, correct me if I'm wrong. They stole this idea. Uh, now that I don't remember. They stole it from Atabay. Oh, because well, the Atabay five packs. Atabay came out with five packs, yeah. and they love the design. Now, Atabay's is a little different, and we'll get into that when we get into uh, Nelson Alfonso's products. But they loved the way the five packs looked and the way the, the top slipped off. You don't pop the top on it and slide out uh, cigars or anything like that, or you don't just unwrap it. It's got an actual box and uh, description on the back. Uh, uh, this was the Toro six and a quarter by uh, 52 and what I think they're gonna do is on the side here you see some white space I think they're gonna add eventually their flavor profile that you find on inside the box I love when you do that with your mouth full yeah I know so they're gonna <laughs> add that flavor profile here on the side so you still have it when you uh, take the pack with you so and again I just I'm a huge proponent of this. I think it's great for for experts and novice novices alike to be able to exactly uh, see and, that. and and while we're and while I'm touching on that, here's the one for the guild again, same coloring and distinctness, and I've got one for the Epicure uh, Maduro, which we're getting ready to get to. Which we're good. Well, you've already hit the Epicure. Well, we're on the Epicure right now. Right, right. So the Epicure when it came out in 2016 was considered the Steve McQueen of cigars. I love Steve McQueen. You had when you said Steve McQueen, <laughs> you had me. So, the Steve McQueen of cigars, in fact, it was so highly rated that um Stogie Press rated it a 97 out of 100. Holy crap. Cigar Coop rated it a 94 out of 100. And out of 214 cigars that year, uh, 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 last year, 2019, Half Wheel rated it number 15 on their list. 
So yeah. that's how good this Epicure cigar is. And that's why it's Brandon's favorite. Yeah. Um, it is, uh, so it has a Nicaraguan binder and filler, uh, and an Ecuadorian Connecticut shade wrapper. Okay. Now you said that, and I'm going to explain because you explained it to me. Ecuadorian shade means that the tobacco was grown under a shaded area. <laughs> I, That's true. I, I, you know, I mean. Some people don't understand I, what that means. I, I, and, and, and we need to clarify. So. Uh, and that's not an uncommon practice in the uh, uh, cigar growing industry. Some of the stuff will be grown under a shade based on how much sun they get and what the weather's like. Uh, and they will sh uh, grow it under shade to keep the leaves from burning and to get, for them to get not get too much sun. That's right. I can look you once once. There you go. <laughs> that's perfect. All right. So still within that line. Now, little known fact. Uh, they had some issues in 2016, I think, with the FDA on this for some reason. Um, or maybe they had some issues with the, the blend and had to pull back a little bit and then re-released it later in 2017, initially. What those issues were, go to their webpage, look it up yourself. I hate the FDA. I'm going to provide some research, but not... And that's probably going to get some people hating me, but the <laughs> FDA, half the time they don't know what the hell they're doing. All right. So this is the uh, the Epicure Maduro. This is the Maduro. I love the Maduro. Um, so That's same, why I have a little box. Same as the Epicure. It wasn't released till 2019, so basically three years or two years later, depending on what timeline you're looking at. It has a subtle sweetness to it, but what's different about it, same binder and filler, but again, the wrapper's different, and it is a San Andreas Maduro wrapper. Ah. So that's what distinguishes the Maduro Epicure from the regular Epicure. Now, when we get to Casa Torrent, you're going to hear San Andreas, I <laughs> could watch it. Yeah, a lot. Uh, and if you are prejudiced against Mexican tobacco, you need to get over it because they make some awesome tobacco in that region. And there are a lot of great cigars coming out of that uh, tobacco out of that region. Not just from Casa Torrent, but from Crux and other yeah. companies. And just like it's, uh, I'll say it's uh, older brother, the Maduro also, when it was released this past year, got a 94 out of 100 rating by uh, Stogie Press. So, again, another excellent cigar. And Stogie Press is a little, they're a little draconic about their grading, from what I can tell. Uh, you don't see many that rate higher than a 94. Right. So this one, when I say subtle sweetness, its flavor profile is cocoa, molasses, and cedar. And on the strength, it's a medium to full. And I think that that hits it perfectly because when I smoke this, I get all of those flavors throughout the cigar and it tends to move as I smoke it, which I mentioned last week. To me, a great cigar has movement throughout the cigar. It has a complexity. It has a it yeah. has a, a, a changing flavor so that you can enjoy different things uh, throughout the, the, the smoke. So if the red was the Steve McQueen of cigars, any idea what this color is meant to convey or represent? Robert Redford. Well, maybe... Clint Eastwood. No. So it's the 1957 Chevy Bel Air. Okay. And you know what? So a, cla I, a, no, no, a, cla a no, classic? I had a friend of mine who had a Chevy Bel Air. There you go. That year, that color. That color. And now that you say that, that makes all the sense in the world. And when it drove by, you would say, sweet. Yeah, except it didn't have a heater in it. <laughs> <laughs> so it was subtle, but it was sweet. Just, oh, like, was. just like the flavor and I still And I still own that car. I mean, <laughs> my buddy got rid of it years ago, but he... Uh, <laughs> Uh, he drove me home one night on a sleeting cold night uh, from work in that car, and it didn't have a heater, and I froze my ass off. I'd still ride in it again under the same conditions. I mean, those are just beautiful cars. They're such classics, and so is that stick. There you go. And that's actually the most recent cigar that they they released was last year. Um, 
And that's, uh, I think we've gone through all the sticks now and all my note cards that I had actual notes on it. One thing I did notice, if you want to compare the old versus the new, because they still had to sell out of the old yeah. as they were transitioning to the new branding, but every now and then you'll see something like this. Here is a new cigar box with an old brand on it. If I turn it over on the back, the UPC code has the old the crux old label one. on it. Because yeah. you know what? They printed a whole bunch of those. And they were going to use them. Well, they're going to use them. It's the same size, and it's still the bull and the bear. It's just a different logo. So there you go. Now, again, we love Crux. We love Hogan. Both of them. We love those guys. Those guys know how to party. And they know how to party. Uh, <laughs> if you can get them into your local cigar lounge, talk your guys, your the, your local cigar lounge, into, and according them and getting them in, and have them come in and talk. Because one of the things that uh, a lot of cigar lounges don't do, they'll do a uh, an event where a vendor will come in, and basically it's a sell a whole bunch of sticks things. But when the Hogan's come in, uh, they come in and they hang with you. They sit with you. They're willing to take questions. They're, they talk about their processes. And they are hell of a parties, partiers. And uh, when the Hogan's get drunk, it's funny. <laughs> so, it is. Not on, not, not but, on but this. But when I get drunk, I'm funny too. So yeah, we are <laughs> at least I funny. think I'm funny. <laughs> so along those lines, and on the drunk lines, but talking about good quality, we talked about this earlier in the show, you know, how the cigar lounge that we go to and what why we love it so much and makes it, I think, one of the best cigar lounges anywhere you'll find in the world. I, I would put it in the top five anywhere in the world. I have to say that because I haven't been to every country in the world in every lounge. That's true. That's true. I would I would put it up there with, with, with the top five. Is they do those things. They 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 work with and partner with good quality cigar companies, good people who have uh, a passion. High, high standards, good passion, take care of their people. Um, you know, so it's people you want to be associated with. And these guys Jeff and Casey uh, and, and their reps come in, they'll do a little presentation, talk about the cigar, smoke a cigar with you, answer your questions. You know, uh, we talked last week about uh, Patoro. Those guys have come in. Uh, Pablo's come in and talked to, about his process. You can ask him questions. Hey, what did you do before this? What made you, you know, decide to get involved in it? And you get to learn about the history of the, the owners and the cigar, and for me... And that's a failing for this episode. Because we did not get a chance to quiz uh, the Hogans or the reps and everything and talk about why they got into the industry like we did with Patoro. Right. Uh, and we'll try to change that in the future. Uh, well, we, we, have a, we have a weak time limit. if we uh, We do have a weak time limit, and I fell down... Uh, I will admit this again. Uh, I've got some stuff going on uh, at home that's uh, caused me not to have the uh, research time that I should have. I will make that up in the future. But uh, And I want to thank Chris because he has been awesome as far as doing the research on this. And well, I don't know what I do without him. I, I do want to I do want to mention one other thing. They did have a new member join the Crux team recently. Yep. Uh, the, their direct sales uh, executive director, uh, Sam Ventura, uh, who is actually over the Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, and Arkansas markets. So congratulations to Sam. Welcome to the Crux family. And since you're and a part of their see you family, at the shop soon. Yeah. Welcome to the family. That's the, the motto of uh, Industrial Cigar Company. And uh, we welcome you in and look forward to seeing you come visit. Uh, and go out and... Find your crux. Find your crux. Now, the question I wanted to ask, and I saw this online, and it has nothing to do with crux, but it has to do with cigar culture in general. And the question was, somebody mentioned that they heard that in order to show respect for a cigar, you take the band off before you light. 
and whether that was a thing or not. Now, I personally do not do that. Uh, I don't, well, I say that. If the band is on the foot, I'll go ahead and take that off, <laughs> yeah. obviously. But I wait till I've got s some smoke on it before I remove the bands. And you'll notice that I've taken, and Chris and I both have taken the uh, Red Line and the uh, Crux logos off of these sticks. And I like, the, I like looking at the logo while I'm smoking. I do like that. I, and I would say I don't take it off out of, I don't, and I think, I think it's a personal preference, really, because I don't think it's disrespectful to keep it on there while you're smoking. Now, I, I, I think it's disrespectful to let it burn. To let it burn, yes, I can see that, but I also take mine off before it gets close to burning for a selfish reason, because I collect and keep all of the bands for every cigar I've ever smoked now, for the past 20 years. Now, he says that. Now, I I keep a lot of my bands. I don't keep all of them. But I want you to think about this. Chris has been smoking for how long? Hold on. Let me do the math. Uh, 25 years. 25 years. <laughs> Where the hell are you storing all those bands, man? <laughs> so, I will tell you that it was a... It took me... Two and a half weeks, about four months ago, to go through. I, I had two Xerox copy box, empty boxes full of nothing but cigar bands. And so I have a book bookcase humidor that's about eight feet tall. It's a beautiful humidor. And what I want to do is I want to wallpaper the sides with all the bands from all the cigars I've ever smoked. Dude, you could you could you could and so, wallpaper thirty. It, it took me those. it took me two and a half weeks to number one collect enough books I have a lot of books I like to read and put those in the pages to flatten them out so I can get them on there and so now it's been about four months since I've done that I did it back in the winter probably a little bit longer now five months uh, I did it back in December when I had some extra time right. on my hands so now it's okay now I've got to put this action that I have in plan in place and figure out you know, how I'm going to lay them out and then get the epoxy to go over it, you know, like you do in a bar and they've got the bottle caps or the coasters underneath the bar top. Yeah. That's what yeah. I want to do to the sides of my humidor. So that's what I'm doing. Now, granted, you're right. I have enough to wallpaper the inside, outside, the bottoms, the top, uh, and even the glass door if I wanted to on it. For, for, for at least 10 different humidors, <laughs> at least. So I'm thinking about maybe even doing a small uh, coffee table or a couple of coasters or something. Well, see, that's, that's my long-term so. goal is I'm going to get enough to do a nice big table out, that I can have out on a patio where I do my smoking or in, you know, my man cave slash whatever. Idea just stolen. Hey. So I have one of the one of the old tabletops yep. from the lounge, the round yep. ones. Yep. And on my patio. Yep. And now I've got enough bands that I can put on that and, and put that epoxy over the top of it and now I'll have a good conversation piece. So, idea just stolen. Thank you, Ron. You're most welcome, <laughs> my brother. And I'm probably, I stole it from somebody else. So, uh, there's, and and on that subject, uh, and, you know, that's what I love about this show. You, we can jump subjects all over the place. Uh, there are a lot of people out there, search them out, who do artwork based on that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Uh, uh, and there are even yeah. software programs that if you scan in, what your labels are, they will show you how to arrange them to make patterns and faces yeah. and uh, uh, what is the uh, uh, collages? Yeah, collages. Collages of those labels to make other pictures. There, there's a, a lady that. And that's why I brought it up. Mark McClurkin. Mark McClurkin sent a whole bunch of his labels to, and she's making a picture design out of his cigar labels. Mark McClurkin's one of the. Uh, members at our lounge that we go to good buddy of ours went went hog hunting with us and to cuba and to cuba yeah we had a great time in cuba all right so we've covered crux cigars as much of the knowledge that we could collect in a week uh we hope you've enjoyed it i know i did and if you didn't screw you <laughs> <laughs> stay tuned for the next one who do you want to do next week all right so i don't, don't i don't want to do principal John John gave us a suggestion for Crux because it was his favorite and he was here last week. Yep. Um, and the reason I don't want to do Principal... I, I picked Patoro, so that's your turn to pick. Damn it. <laughs> <coughs> well, 
well, I don't want to do principal because principal is going to be a very in-depth. Uh, in fact, when we do principal, we're probably going to have to dedicate two hours. Or at least an hour and a half. At least an hour and a half. Uh, one, be, just because of the artwork standpoint and talking about that aspect. Oh. And how... And I've Darren got some of got, those prints. Yeah. And, and Darren got into the, Darren Chalfy got into the cigar business. So we need to pick a date out in the future for that one that so one. we can communicate with Darren. And exactly. Maybe, and Darren's doing the shop in, in the next month or two. So maybe we can, smoke. we can hold off on that. We'll hold uh, off on that one. Get some insider uh, information for you guys. Uh, you want to do Casa Torrent next week or do you want to do Drew Estates? Let's do Drew Estates. Okay. I think Casa Trent's another one that has a lot of stuff behind it and other things that we can talk about. I mean, about. the whole one shot, one kill nickname alone is going to kill up 15 minutes of a oh yeah of a show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Edgar Hoya, we love you, brother. Thank you uh, for everything. Uh, but that's Casa Torrent. We'll get to that one. But next week, we're going to do Drew Estates and, refresh my memory, Robert Holt. Yes. And Robert Holt, uh, uh, met Robert a couple of times, another great guy. Uh, him and his wife, that he, and his he wife. does the... Uh, uh, don't put me Desert on the spot. Rose? The Desert Rose. Yeah. No, no, no. The. Uh, See, now we're... Uh, it's a question we weren't prepared for. Uh, it, it's the alcohol. Yeah. Uh, Rosa Sharon. Rosa Sharon, yeah. Rosa, Rosa Sharon. Sharon. Uh, but there is a Desert Rose in, Rose of Sharon, in the Rose of Sharon. Okay. I, like, so you, yeah. so we, so oh, we're right. more completely off. But yeah, Rose of Sharon now, is made for. Well, we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll get to that. Now, we'll jump the gun. Uh, one more thing. Next week, I got to change chairs. Okay. I'm too short. Well, I'm sitting up, and you're 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 relaxed. I'm sitting up because you're if too I damn tall. if I were to sit back in this what I call baseball <laughs> mitt of a chair, I'm like laid all the way back. I feel like I'm trying to take a nap or something. Oh God. So. I want to thank everybody for showing up. I'm sorry. Thanks, John, for showing up. The rest of you, fuck you. I'll see you later. Thanks for showing up, Ron. <laughs> Thanks for showing up, Chris. I couldn't do this show without you. And uh, and I mean that honestly. And uh, hope to see everybody again. And I'm going to end the, the video properly this time. And we're not going to let it go on. Another, on yeah. And we're not going to let it ramble on for another five oh, minutes. Oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I oh, forgot. oh, yes. Last thing. So this is the old Crux logo. This is a, a nice mouse uh, mat pad. pad, and I like about it. Number one, it's got the old Crux logo, uh, premium sticks. Has the old tagline, "Go Crux Yourself." Now it's "Find Your Crux." Remember, go take a picture, tag it with hashtag Find Your Crux, and maybe you'll get one of their advertisements. But it has cigar measurements on the bottom, and then here it has ring sizes. So, so you can stick your stick on the end of it and say, oh, well, that's a 42 I'll or a 52. Or a, yeah, this is a 42. What does it go up to? It goes up to a 70. So that's over an inch because a 64 is an inch. Seven, 60 was an inch. 64 is an 64 inch. 64 is an inch. Yeah. Well, so it goes all the way up to a 70. But anyway, this is uh, something. And I'm going to work on tracking down a 70 inch or a 70, yeah, 70. ring gauge cigar so that we can smoke it online. There we go. But there you go. So there's the old logo. Um, it's resting in peace safely on my desk at home. And uh, No, I, you can't get that. He's not going to send that to you. Who's John. That? Oh, John's asking for it? <laughs> uh, you might look on eBay. They might, <laughs> you might find one on eBay. Uh, I think it was a promotional thing. It was and, a, uh, probably a promotional thing soon after they opened. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure you got it from Industrial. I did. So, anyway... Thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks for joining us for the whole show. And uh, look forward to seeing you next week. It's Winners for watching. He's at, hey, dude, I'm going to, I've got some cigars here. I'll make sure that uh, Chris sends you next. <laughs> Everybody have a great time. Thanks again. Thanks, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button. If you want to see more of our stuff, hit the subscribe button. And if you want to get notified, hit that bell. You know what to do. If you want to see more Saturday at the shop and Tales from the Lounge stuff, hit the playlist, check out our channel, and let us know what you think. Love your feedback. Have a great day.